Greetings students, this is the Professor Travel welcoming you to our day two of our London trip. This specific day saw us starting at a bus terminal uh, with tours scheduled for both Buckingham Palace as well as the Tower of London. As we approached Buckingham Palace and parked, on the left side of the street, there was a diplomat's entrance that you were able to go into if you could afford it. Um, but then as you move to the front of Buckingham Palace, they have a massive fountain with golden statues for all to see. The gates of Buckingham Palace are gilded with gold all the way through. The size of the structure where the Queen of England lives is just monumental and has, <laughs> I think it's close to a hundred rooms available. Of course, what visit the Buckingham Palace would not be complete without seeing some of the guards on display. If you come at just the right time, you can see the changing of the guards. It is quite impossible to get into Buckingham Palace without a formal invitation, but hey, you know what? You want to try on the outside? You know, you can, you can give it a shot. <laughs> Unfortunately, you might just get a shot. We did like the architecture and the people of London were very inviting. I took this picture from the fountain itself as you were within the distance of Buckingham Palace. So it gives you a little bit of a broader view of how large this structure is. As we left Buckingham Palace, we had an opportunity to view a variety of different famous landmarks, all of which were beautiful, but very crowded. Getting the opportunity to view some of the statues and landmarks is one of the thrills of going to London because everywhere you look, there are structures that are both ancient and revered and some have been here for th almost a thousand years, like this archway. As we move throughout the tour, we had an opportunity to just quickly pass by the new Scotland Yard building. Seeing the memorial from the Battle of Britain, again, was another one of those moments that is both surreal and at the same time reverent. What trip to London would be complete without a visit to both the Parliament building as well as Big Ben? As you can see, when we went, they had uh, reinforcements being done to the outside of it so we didn't get a full view of the grandeur of it but at the same time it was also nice to know that they're keeping up the monuments also if you've had an opportunity to see the movies um, Skyfall or Spider-Man Far From Home this building might also look familiar it's uh, the police building located in London Again, a better view of the Eye of London. This one was done from the Thames River. On the Thames, there are a variety of different bridges, uh, some of which are very famous, other ones are not so much so. While sailing on the Thames, we had an opportunity to view a restructured version of Shakespeare's The Globe Theater. The original one burnt down several hundreds of years ago, but this is a accurate reconstruction of the globe. Off in the distance, you see a couple of famous monuments there. The tall building in the background is the Shard of London, followed by the Tower Bridge go overlooking the Thames. Right next to it is the Tower of London. The infamous Tower of London was both a prison as well as a fortification where uh, King Henry VIII and a number of other rulers lived during their time in London. The Tower Bridge is one of the more iconic bridges and is often confused with London Bridge, uh, which is now in Arizona. While doing our cruise of the Thames River, we had an opportunity to take in some high tea, which was really quite delightful. High tea, for those of you who are uh, not initiated, includes scones with both jam and clotted cream, uh, finger sandwiches, and then some desserts. It's also served with both tea and champagne. We then entered into the Tower of London which again has a variety of different buildings inside of it. And it's not so much a tower as much as it's a keep and castle that houses a tower where prisoners were kept at one point during their stay in London. More recently, artists have reconstructed uh, statues of animals that were presented to the royal families throughout the ages. It's interesting because many of these statues are constructed from what looks like chicken wire uh, but these are specific animals that did in fact at one point uh, reside at the Tower of London. Present in the armory in the Tower of London are a variety of different swords, suits of armor, spears and pikes, rifles, flintlock pistols, cannons, 
and even unusual architectural sculptures created by local artists. This specific one is in the shape of a dragon made of a variety of different um, metallic pieces. Historical suits of armor are represented here, as well as the weapons of the era. With many of the suits of armor, even the plate mail, you can see how they were articulated in order to help the person move their legs much easier, such as you can see on the upper thighs of this specific suit of armor. British armor is not the only thing on display. This collection of Oyori armor, or samurai armor, is provided and was given as a gift to the royal family hundreds of years ago and is in beautiful shape on the display at the Tower of London. Oftentimes people are curious about why armor is the shape it is. In this particular case, for example, in the one on the left-hand side, it needs a little bit of flexibility if that armor is going to be mounted with a person who's on top of a horse, so the legs need to be flexible. On display, shields, lances, and the fronts of various helmets as well. For historical context, this is what a person might have looked like when they were riding a horse using a spear. A collection of breastplates dots the armory and for everyone to see how articulated some of them are, but still the level of protection that's available to them as well. The pristine condition of many of these pieces of armor is very breathtaking. One of the permanent residents of the Tower of London is a collection of ravens that are caretaken by the guard who have been there for many years and live their lives um, as mascots for the Tower of London. Again, more of the chicken wire sculpture of animals who used to reside in the Tower of London. In this particular case, uh, I believe these are baboons. This is the spot where King Henry VIII had Anne Boleyn executed and beheaded with a sword from her own swordsman. The pillow that you see there is where her head would have laid. On display are the barracks for the guards of the Tower of London. Sitting in the center of the tower is the White Keep. This is actually where the armory is held. Again, another beautiful chicken wire display of animals that used to be in the Tower of London. This particular case was a bear. To get inside the Tower of London, you actually had to cross a drawbridge in order to be able to get from the mainland area into the tower. So it's very heavily fortified and protected. Time for a restful evening. We actually happened upon a hotel which was actually located on the second floor of an inn and pub located in London. We took our baggage upstairs, three flights of stairs. Unfortunately, they did not have an elevator, but the room was very well appointed and actually really comfortable. Just outside the main bedroom was a balcony where my husband could go outside and smoke in private um, with a little astroturf as well because obviously it rains as much as it does in London. The bathroom also had a very nice shower as well as something we don't see too often in the States a towel rack that actually is plugged in that will warm your towels for you. It's kind of a little, really nice little treat. I really hope you enjoyed the day two of our London trip. If you would like, please feel free to subscribe and like this video. It really does mean a lot to me. Also, please feel free to find us on our Facebook app as well as Instagram under The Professor Travel. Until next time, cheerio.